Ukrainian company Burisma, which is at the center of the impeachment saga. And not only does this new reporting stir memories of Russia's interference in the 2016 campaign, it is also very much in the here and now. The Russian hackers, they're from the GRU, the same unit that hacked the Clinton emails, the center of this scandal, the company that Hunter Biden is under the board of. And the fear here is that what they're looking for is the same kind of dirt that Donald Trump wanted from Ukraine when he pressed the bill of an investigation into Burisma. Remember when the Democrats were repeating over and over that nobody is above the law? Despite the fact it's Democrat-run cities that are giving sanctuary to people that are breaking our immigration laws. No one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. Nobody is above the law. No one is above the law. No one is above the law. No one is above the law, not even the President of the United States. No one's above the law. No one is above the law. That no person is above the law. Nobody should be above the law. Nobody should be above the law. Yeah, it's different when they do it. Well, now the media is trying to set up a narrative that Democrats are basically above the law because if you accuse them of corruption, it's because the Russians did it. I kid you not. They're seriously suggesting that if you think Biden might be corrupt, it's because the Russians somehow planted that idea in your head. No, 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 no. It has nothing to do with Joe Biden being on video bragging about a quid pro quo that involved firing the Ukrainian prosecutor that was investigating the corrupt company that Joe Biden's son was inexplicably a board member of. This latest attempt by the Democrats and their media to steal this election is very similar to how they reacted to the DNC servers when they were hacked, which exposed Democrat party corruption and collusion with the media. Also interesting is remember, it's illegal to possess uh, these stolen documents. It's different for the media. So everything you learn about this, you're learning from us. What did they do? They buried those stories, never to talk about them again because it was unfair. In case you need to be brought up to speed, the election is only legitimate if a Democrat wins it because Russians. And Democrats can't be investigated for corruption because Russians. So now the media and the Democrats are putting forth a narrative that they're hoping will give Democrats an edge in 2020. This new narrative started with a supposed hack on Burisma, which is the corrupt energy company that Joe Biden's son was a board member of. The New York Times just broke this story and they're citing findings by a cybersecurity company called Area One. Unsurprisingly, Democrats are now taking their cue from the media and trying to frame any negative news or legitimate questions about Joe Biden as Russian interference. Now, this is where it it's interesting. Here's a list of things not mentioned in this New York Times article. The first thing that's odd and not reported in this New York Times article is that the company that supposedly caught this hack on Burisma, Area One, was started by a former employee of CrowdStrike. You'll remember CrowdStrike was the company that certified the DNC servers were hacked by Russia. Now, according to Breitbart.com, Area One has now been hired by most of the Democrat presidential candidates. They obviously don't mention this in the article, but Area One is funded by a technology venture capital firm whose employees are Democrat donors. It's also odd that Area One is partnered with Google and CrowdStrike was actually funded by one of Google's parent companies. Another thing is if you look at Area One's co-founder on Twitter, he's clearly a Democrat supporter. And besides that, he's a big donor to Democrat presidential candidates. According to Breitbart.com, Falkowitz is an expert for the annual RSA conference on cybersecurity, where Dimitri, CrowdStrike's co-founder and chief technology officer, serves on the advisory board. Area One participates annually in the RSA conference alongside CrowdStrike's Al Parvovich. CrowdStrike was financed to the tune of $100 million from a funding drive last year led by Google Capital. I know, I know, this is all getting into Pepe Silvia territory, but but stick with me. Google Capital, which now goes by the name of Capital LG, is an arm of the Alphabet Inc., Google's parent company. Eric Schmidt, the chairman of Alphabet, has been a staunch and active supporter of Hillary Clinton and is a longtime donor to the Democrat Party. Area One, meanwhile, partnered with Google to become Google's cloud technology partner for security. A major Area One investor is Kleiner Perkins, whose employees give overwhelmingly to the Democrats. So what's my point? I guess what I'm trying to say is that all of these parties, be it Google, Area One, the Democrats, the media, all of them have a vested interest in Democrats being in power, as well as demonizing and destroying their political opposition on the right. Oh, what a surprise that they're actually trying to rationalize out some sort of a narrative where Democrats are actually above the law. The media wants to constantly blame Trump for eroding public confidence in the media. But really, it's this. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Go ahead 
and hit that bell notification while you're at it so you can be alerted to my new content. With YouTube demonetizing everything that I upload and then never manually reviewing any of it, I'm not making anything on any of these videos, making it hard to justify all the time it takes to put them together. That's why I rely on my Subscribestar, Patreon, and PayPal supporters. If you'd like to support this channel, you can find all the links in the description and pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.